You're busy, you've got a decent practice, but nobody wants to be decent. You want to be great, and you want to have a great practice. So how do the most productive, profitable dentist in the nation balance real life, work, and profits, and somehow make it all seem fun? Well, it comes down to simple, everyday practices. So grab a lunch, join us as we chat with top clinicians and influencers to discover their formula for uncommon success. Are you ready? Then it's time to explore everyday practices with Vicki McManus-Peterson and Dr. Chad Johnson. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Everyday Practices. This is Chad Johnson out of Des Moines, Iowa area, and we have Vicki McManus-Peterson here. Vicki, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, Chad. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm excited about interviewing one of our PDA coaches, Kelly, today, but why don't I let you introduce her? I will. This is such a pleasure. Kelly and I first met, I'm going to say eight years ago, maybe nine years ago, when she was, she was a very successful office administrator for a high-end aesthetic doctor in the Michigan area. And she answered an ad to become a coach. Kelly, why do you want to become a coach? And her first response was, I don't know that I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. So I true. Wanted to the ad. <laughs> and she said, well, Vicki, you know, I'm just in a place where the canvas in my life is blank and I can't wait to see what colors show up. And from that very first moment, it's been an adventure with Kelly. And she is actually the reason many of you know that I owned and partnered in dental practices in Wisconsin. And I'm here to just say that that would not have been possible without the support of Kelly Bellinger. She was our director of operations. She oversaw the entire project from acquisition to uh practice transition to my partner. She was integrated and all of that as director of operations. So I'm excited to welcome you here, Kelly. I'm so glad that you also are now a coach at PDA at Productive Dentist Academy and director of operations there. And today I really want to tap into your brain. Chad, I call her the associate whisperer. Isn't that great? So if you are a doctor thinking about hiring an associate or you want to have multiple locations with associate doctors, having the insights and wisdom of somebody like Kelly is uh, just invaluable. So Kelly, welcome here. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. This is really um, a playground that I love to, to be in. Um, working with associates, it's, you know, it's, it's important that you, you think about it ahead of time and make good decisions for yourself as a business. You might think that you want to hire an associate, but there's really a lot of thought that has to go into it ahead of time. Would you agree with that, Chad? Yeah, I, I Carrie will my my coach Carrie is always reviewing that with me, you know, over the years it's like okay, is now a good time is now a good not a good time and ultimately kind of like wearing, you know, should you wear shorts or should you wear pants for the weather for the day. You know, <laughs> ultimately, you don't know if it's the right call or not because it could change, but you know, at least you <laughs> well, Vicky, come on now. Uh, so you, ultimately you don't know, but you also want to make calculated, uh, risks. Exactly. Exactly. And, um, plan ahead of time. So, you know, if you know, that's the direction you're going to go, <laughs> allow yourself the time to plan ahead of time so that you make, make good decisions. Mm -hmm. So, so how, do plan? how do you know, mm -hmm. I want to eliminate this because some, uh, this is a huge topic, right? Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm topic of looking at it from the owner perspective. There's the topic of looking at it from the associate perspective. There's all of that. So if we, for this short podcast, focused on, I'm a solo doctor. I, I feel like I want to have an associate or I want to grow and expand. What are some of the reasons that's a good decision, not a good decision? What would I look for to know if, if I wear shorts or long pants? Should you wear shorts or pants? Is today a, a long sleeve day or short know? sleeve day? How, how do you know? Is it time for an associate or not? Well, all right. So let me answer that question from this perspective too, because there's lots of different reasons that we think we want to hire an associate. So sometimes it's because we just want to reduce our hours. You know, maybe as a dentist, you don't want to work as hard. Um, perhaps there might be some medical 
conditions going on and you need to cut back and you need some help, or perhaps it's just your strategy to grow, you know, if, if you're ready to grow. So I'm going to just address for today and, um, Maybe we'll go into part two another time, but I'm going to just ad- <laughs> um, I'm going to just address for today the approach of you're a dentist and you're looking for the next stage to grow. Okay, sound good? Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll kind of talk from that perspective. So, obviously, one of the first things you need to look at is um, can you afford it? Is this the right time? So, um, you know, are you, where, where is your practice currently sitting at? So we've measured some metrics that probably are, are key points that you should know about is you're really not ready to bring on an associate until your collections are about 1.1 to 1.8 million. Um, you need to have a, an active patient base of probably pretty close to 2000. And then you need to make, take a look at your, your current uh, new patient volume. Are you getting 50 to 75 new patients a month? And then, you know, what's, the, what's your capacity at your facility? Are you, you know, how many operatories do you have? Is this something that you're going to need to extend your hours? Are you going to um, need to hire additional team members to come in? Are you going to use your existing team members without having to pay them overtime? So there's lots to be considered. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to I'm going to chime in here. Yeah, as advocate. So I'm a dentist. I've been at it for 15 years. I'm producing and collecting about 800 thousand, and I'm just flat out tired. You know, I'm tired and I don't know where to put any more patients and I'm done with taking PPOs and I want to grow and I want to retire. So I'm going to hire an associate to work three days a week and, and I'm, I'm good to go. That So Kelly, that. give her the stamp of approval, a gold star. Done. Done. Go, go, just. just do it. Be like Nike, right? Just do it. <laughs> but you're telling me I'm too small. I might be doing it for the wrong, like me being tired is probably not the right reason. And you, you got to have a little more thought process. Though. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. You need to make sure that you're ready financially, that you've thought through um, exactly the type of candidate that you're looking for. Um, so yes, I mean, obviously you're tired. You need help. You threw me a winger. Well, but Kelly, here's the thing though. Like when, when, when Vicki, you brought that up, Kelly was going dr- down the growth strategy option. Yeah. And so the trouble is if, if someone said, well, I want to reduce my hours or I want to, you know, bow out, that's a different, that's almost a different discussion altogether. So, I mean, if we keep it on the strategy of growth, the question becomes then, is this a, a transition for the dentist to leave, which then becomes a transition discussion, not necessarily bringing on an associate for the sake of associateship or, or for growth. Yes. Thank you. And I brought that contrast up because this is how doctors think, right? They, they're they're duplicitous. Yeah. Talk on want us. Want to expand. Talk well, I really don't want to expand. So thank you. This is perfect. Chad, you brought on an associate. Were these numbers and benchmarks ringing true for you? Yes. Uh, but I'll tell you, I, I broke the rules when I brought on a second associate um, against Carrie's recommendation. But I, <laughs> so I mean, credit to her. And, you know, after a while, uh, we've gone back down to one associate. I feel like that fits better financially into our, uh, into our mold. And when you talk about, uh, when you talk about associateships, I, I do think of it as business dating. And Kelly, we, we were bantering on email back and forth about that. You know, when sometimes someone could say, well, I'm happy just where I am. Then it's like, well, then that's like if someone said, I'm happy being single. Then it's like, well, then be happy being single. No problem right. there, right? right? Exactly. So, yeah. And if someone said, well, I'm afraid that what if I marry the wrong person? It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa you have to go out on the first date first. You know, like there's no reason to be overly nervous about marriage before you've even, you know, given it a try. So, you know, so what you, you hire someone for a year in the grand scheme of things and, and it doesn't go well and you just discontinue the contract. I mean, yes, you're out a year. Yes, you're out some money. So that's something that everyone would have to weigh, but there's some people that it's, you have to be reminded that, Hey, it's time to just, you know, give it a go. Exactly. Exactly. And, um, 
it, we, we do know that it typically does take between nine to 12 months before you really have a clear indication of whether or not this particular person is aligning with your standard of care, yes. with your philosophies. Um, are your patients accepting this additional associate? So, so Chad, did you work pretty hard when you brought on your associates as well, as far as helping your team script out how you're going to promote this particular associate? At this point. So I, I brought an associate on after I was open, I think four years and that one did not go well, uh, mostly because I needed to learn how to be, looking for the right candidate myself and being the right employer uh, or head dentist. So just, uh, just like dating, the more that you're doing of it, the more you realize about yourself that you know what you want. So, you know, if you asked a, a 14 year old kid, what are you looking for in a spouse someday? It's just like, well, I don't know. You know, they don't know. And it's not right or wrong, but they just don't know. By the time they're 20, they start to figure out, well, I like tall guys or whatever. You know, they start to, but then by the time they're 30, they go, all right, so here's the deal. I just don't like when people are overly talkative. I don't like when they are rude to other people, you know, and I, I, you know, you start realizing the things that you want. So with my first associateship and then going to the second one, I was able to verbalize and communicate better what in my headspace I wanted out of someone and what I was able to give. And then by the, the, the third one, uh, (laughs) I know it's so by the third one, um, I was a lot more clear and it was like, it basically came down to this. All right. So here's the deal. If you come in and you're expecting this, this, and this, this is not going to work for you. What I can give you is this, but I'm not going to give you this. And I, I, I'm willing to bend to no end on this, but I'm not willing to bend on this. I knew myself better. Right. And I'm hoping by the 20th associateship that uh, (laughs) I'm just kidding, but I'm hoping that, you know, eventually you figure it out, right. Everyone in dating has to figure out their, uh, how to get their selves themselves together. And then eventually they uh, also find the right person. And then it, it matches up that you're the right person for them. And they're the right person for you. You've become that better person and I'm getting there. Yeah, exactly. Which is exactly to my point that had you had you been able to be clear about your expectations the first time, chances are that associateship probably would have been much more successful. It would have. Agreed? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So so taking the time to understand or, or to figure out ahead of time what your expectations are. Yes. Uh, instead of just jumping in. Yes. Um, did you have to think about a different style of mentorship? So what, what is it that you needed to invest in your associates to be able to mentor them? Yep. So right now it's a great time for online education. And a lot of the dentists these days like uh, being able to save time and money by learning as much as possible online as opposed to, so I like trying to, this is what I also think is I like autonomy. And so I give autonomy, right? I reciprocate what I expect from people that I really like. And so I think I'm doing people good by giving them autonomy, but some people, they might come in as an associate and they're like, I don't want autonomy. I want, you know, you over my shoulder. And I'm going to be like, why in the world would you want that? I feel like I'm disrespecting you. If I were to do that, that just seems wrong. But they would say that this autonomy, why I came here wrong. Yes. I wanted to learn from you. So occasionally we have to recalibrate with our associates and say, am I giving you enough? And isn't that true to a relationship? Like, am I giving you enough? Am I taking too much? Am I taking too little? Am I giving too much too little? So basically we have to say, you know, it, I, I do, are you, do you need to go learn some more CE? Uh, is it a CE issue or do you just need, is it a mentality kind of issue? So I've sent my uh, last couple associates to the Productive Dentist Academy workshop, which has worked uh, wanders on our stats, but also on the confidence level of them being able to present what's happening in their mind, the nerd talk that's happening in their mind and the engineer talk to be able to, to bring that into normal day conversation. So that way the case acceptance is better. So I love this. Um, Kelly, I'm going to, you're so good at asking questions. Of the yeah, issues. I know. Right. I know, all of a I'm like, We're okay. supposed to be asking you the questions. <laughs> I know. Like, like Jen, I rarely talk on these. Like <laughs> you turn it on. I, well, I do want to highlight though, because there's such method to what you do. 
And what you've taken Chad through, you very much are this, you are the doc, I should just call you Dr. Whisperer, right? Because you've now gotten, as a coach, you've gotten the owner doctor engaged in, what is it that you truly what do you want? looking for? Right. Well, how, how do you like to mentor? So for all the listeners, what you've just experienced is how Kelly really works with our owner doctors to help them identify who am I? What am I really looking for? How do I like to mentor? What assumptions do I have about how people learn, what I'm willing to do, what they're willing to do? She's shaking her head. You can't see that in radio. Yes, yes, like, exactly. Yes. She is this like magic because she asks these questions. And so I want you to kind of pull it through a little bit because what I, what I was able to craft with you and I just love the way we work together on this particular piece right so Chad um, Kelly would interview myself and my partner in these ways and then she would craft these magical classified ads that would not get a lot of phone calls but they always attracted the right person so can you talk to us a little bit if I'm looking for an associate not all candidates are created equal. There's different educational levels and there's different places to find them. What could you give us from the owner doctor who wants to expand? What could, what could you share with us about that? About recruiting or about what to look for, how to find a true match? Both. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, finding a true match is, so first of all, when you do your homework and you know what you're willing to give, and then figuring out what it is that that candidate wants as well. So there are, there are some associates who just want to be employees. They don't want to um, do a bunch of CE. They don't want leadership responsibilities. They don't want to have to run a business. They just want to come in and do um, have, an, have a paycheck. So there's those types of, of associates. There's an associate who might want to eventually have ownership. So perhaps they're coming to you because you're, you're talking to them about potential ownership down the road. Um, you know, there might be somebody else who's in the, we call them the sundowners, the final phases of their career. And maybe they too, they, you know, they, they have something to share with you. So it's really about matching up the right person with what your need is going to be, but you've really got to identify what your need is before you can find that ideal person. Um, That's where the expectations come in and, and, and we've hired all three. Yes. Right? We've had yes, young we called hungry for learning. We've had sundowners who had worked for large corporate PPOs and wanted to come to a smaller environment, and that's worked really well. We've had the mid career, you know, I own my own practice. I don't want to own. So I love that you've identified that it's a match between where your practice is and the expectations of oversight, leadership, guidance, and quite honestly, profitability, profit sharing and ownership versus who's the candidate you're looking for. Cause it's very, very different depending on the outcomes. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yes, we did have some fun with some of our recruiting and some of our, um, our interviewing tactics. So, um, you do's and don'ts in that? Um, well, one of the things that I would always do is when I was screening out some candidates, I would always make sure that we did um, a Zoom or a, a face-to-face meeting. And I, always, I would always kind of look in the background. I'd, I'd be checking out their environment. So, you know, do they have, is their desk full of papers? Are they sloppy? Is their lab coat all wrinkled? You know, is their hair a mess? Are they showing? Are they a mad scientist? Are they a mad yeah. scientist or, you know, are they showing up really professional? You know, are they, are they taking this position seriously? Actually, Chad, someone did interview from their king size bed. Yes. <laughs> yes. I did have that happen. I did have that happen. It was very uncomfortable. Um, and. Well, and, I mean, so were you looking at whether there were mirrors on the walls? Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't know. You said you <laughs> But yeah. I, it's just like, you, it's, it's those live meetings when you, the reason you go to a meal with someone is not because it, it is about understanding them, but it's also to observe how do they interact with the wait staff? 
how do they, you know, do they open the door for you or you order, you know, it's all those little social graces that they give you the communication clues, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And if I wasn't going to break any confidences, man, I could tell you some great stories. <laughs> Just change the name to Chad. Just say yeah. Chad. <laughs> Yes. Well, it, Vicky, it, Kelly, would you say also that it's important for people to, uh, to at some point maybe take a risk and be willing to fail? I mean, because if we're looking for the quintessentially perfect candidate, and then you wait 20 years, at that point, you're kind of hosed, right? So yeah. let's say during that time that you gave two or three people a shot, is it any big deal that in the end, you both determined that, you know, marriage isn't right between you two for the business? No, sometimes you just need to take that risk. Right. Sometimes you need to take that risk. If, if it's important enough to you, and you've done your due diligence ahead of time, just, just take the risk. What else would you share with us from an owner's perspective? So I know that I have to be over a million dollars, the closer to a million and a half, 1.8, the better <laughs> poised I am. It also that I know your formula and those ratios go to, towards also how much debt are you carrying? You know, what are the practice, but you've got to have a certain patient base. You've got to be prepared financially. You have to understand your mentorship expectations, what you mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. uh, You've given us a little bit of insight into recruiting. What else would you share with us from that perspective? What would be some great tips? Oh, yeah. Maybe like where to recruit for some people. I'm sure they might not have an, a good idea for that. Is 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 going to the college uh, a good place to meet up with, with them somehow, you know, like plugging in with whatever their state or local dental college to, you know, see if they have any uh, practice sale? Oh, now you're getting into my secret sauce, Chad. Ooh, I knew Whoa. about it, huh? Yes, I'll, I'll tell you. So, um, yes, I mean, you really need to be out there in multiple places, right? Yes. You just, you want to have a nice pool to, to fish into. Mm -hmm. So, yes, a lot of the dental schools have their own placement agencies, right, in their own schools that you can meet up with, um, place ads to, uh, do job fairs. They allow you to do job fairs to get yourself out there. Um, I've, I've also worked with headhunters and the piece that I want you to know about headhunters is they, um, they're not really truly headhunters. They're, they're really good at putting out ads on the web and getting it positioned so that they see, they don't necessarily have a Rolodex of all kinds of doctors that they're trying to place. They just, they're, they're really good at placing ads and getting those ads positioned so that they're seen. Um, we've done some really fun things with LinkedIn. Um, we've, we've put out letters to, to people specifically on LinkedIn. Here's the other thing that we did that was kind of um, fun is we actually even approached some of our Aspen Dental dentists specifically because sometimes those guys, they're just done with, with some of the corporate dentistry and they're ready to break into um, the private sector. So we've done that. We've, we've sent letters to the uh, public health departments, um, to some of the dentists there who might be ready to get out of public health. And um, I've also had doctors talk to their classmates. You never know when your classmate might be working as an associate in one place and they're ready to move home. Right. And you reach out to them and they're like, oh man, I'm ready to come home. Mm-hmm. So, oh, that's a great tip as well. Uh, yeah. So, to some, uh, excuse me, to summarize, a lot of times your best associates are the associates who have a little bit of experience. That's what I'm hearing. They've probably taken another job straight out of school and they had a short term contract. They may be in public health, they may have done military. Uh, service. And what I love about all three of those, whether they're in um, a corporate environment, public health or military, is it helps get their speed up. Correct. Right? Correct. A lot of extractions, you're doing a lot of emergency dentistry, you're doing root canals, you're doing the, the core bread and butter work. So I love it when we find experience. We also discovered that if you are the first employer, you probably will only keep that employee two years yep. or years or whatever the contract is. They're mm -hmm. just, they're it's just, funny in my mind. I think it's two and a half years is about what I can. Yeah. They yeah. really don't get locked and loaded until about between year two and six. 
Mm-hmm. That's when they're really starting to get grounded in where they want to be. Mm-hmm. So let's say this is this is 2019 uh, because I'm a former hygienist. We'll say it's 2020. <laughs> so if I'm looking in the sweet spot of associates, you're telling me that I want to find somebody who graduated sometime between uh, 2017, 2018, and maybe 2015, 2015, 2018, going back about three years right now could be a real sweet spot. So at least two years, no more than five years. That's where the real long-term decision-making is being made. That is where the long-term decisions being made. But again, if you're somebody who has a desire to mentor somebody and um, help somebody bring up their speed, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with hiring somebody fresh out of school. Just plan to be able to spend a lot of time with them, do case studies with them, uh, give them time, give them the encouragement, help build their self-esteem, and just be there. I love that. You know what? I'm going to throw that to you, Chad, because this is a great point. How do you, as an owner doctor, because you've mentored a couple of doctors and you're great at it, how do you help them widen their vision, right? Because dental school says, here's your requirements. You've got to check off a crown. You've got to check off a root canal. So it's not comprehensive treatment planning. It's not quadrant dentistry. How How do you help because for me, that was the hardest part is helping the doctor build the confidence going from one tooth to two teeth. Wow. Like, yeah. The then they could do the bridge. Then they could do the quadrant. Then they could do the whole mouth. But yep. it was going from one tooth to two teeth. That was the hard part. How do you mentor that? The first thing, I think there's a lot of wealth in, for example, spareducation.com. There's a lot of videos that can help give the variety of the the diet of your treatment planning. The other thing is if we simplify it, now that that Bruce has told me more of, about the COIS treatment planning of risk factors, that helps give you the why. So that way you're looking for what. So when you're looking for perio, caries, occlusal disease, uh, and aesthetics. If you're, you know, looking at those realms, those are going to help you figure out, you know, and discuss orthodontics, your periodontics, and all the different things that the the newer associate should be looking for. But then also being excited, I guess, about presenting my cases. So I'll say, hey, so look at this case. So this guy had just mandibular anteriors left. We went in ahead and extracted them because of perio disease. Now the patient wants teeth naturally, right? So we talked about implants and they were pretty excited about that. So then we said, okay, so before we pull these teeth, let's talk about what kind of implants do you want? And I also have uh, been noticing that you have a lot of uh, grinding on your teeth. Uh, from before. So should we have your airway assessed and uh, address that into our design of the teeth? I don't know. So when you're looking at the bigger picture is just, you know, talking about that. So um, another good key point for listeners is I uh, plan a lunch with my associate and this might sound ridiculously way too long, but it's, it's better than some and probably worse than others. But I schedule at least once a month that we are having lunch together and, you know, life happens that we're busy or that I'm gone or that she's gone or, or something. But I I always try and make sure that at least once a month that we're having a meeting that we're intentional about, uh, you know, just even chewing the fat or talking about this and that. And if other people say, man, we, we go to lunch every day. Well, good for you. I mean, that, that would be great. (laughs) (laughs) That would be great. You know, yeah. And, and you know, if you can do that, that's, that's great. But if, if you're also thinking, man, I don't know if I could uh, afford to take one lunch a month uh, to meet with an associate, well then uh, mentorship might not be working out for you. You know, it's all about the relationship, isn't it? Yeah. The first couple of weeks I have my associate even just follow ar- around and we're talking about cases and why we're doing what we're doing and everything like that. I also don't want to hire someone that has the same skill set as me exactly. I mean, maybe you do. Maybe the, if it's for retirement, reducing your hours, then you would. But if it's for building up, you'd want to find someone that complements you that isn't replacing you. For example, if someone really loves Invisalign and they love Sarah Crowns and you go to interview a few candidates and one guy says, I love doing Sarah Crowns and Invisalign, that might not be as good as if you found the next guy that says, Hey, I heard that you don't 
like doing root canal treatment. I like doing root canal treatment. And I heard that you don't like pulling wisdom teeth. I actually do really like pulling wisdom teeth. And so finding that complimentary person, you know? Absolutely. I love it. Can I share one more tip that you made me think of this, Chad? Um, one other secret sauce piece that we used to do is when we were uh, make, coming down to final decisions, because they'll tell you they love to do root canals, right? So, <laughs> I suppose so. Right, right. So um, asking them to send you some x-rays yes. of their, their completed root canals, especially ask for that molar x-ray. Yes. And another tip that was really kind of fun is when you're asking for references, ask to speak with one of their lab technicians. Mm -hmm. The lab technicians can really tell you how many times they have to go back and redesign that prep or, you know, that's it. Their, their impressions come to them meticulously. So Kelly, you bring up a good point. So we have a CIRIC, so we don't, you know, no lab technician would really know all too well how good of a crown prep that even I do. So uh-huh. if we're not sending stuff out, you know, it's all in house or most of it or however you're doing it. But one thing I don't have time during the the day to stop and, and check on their prep necessarily, unless they said, I really wish you'd come and look at this, you know? So I don't have that um, that time to do that at the time. So I have them send me a screenshot. Occasionally I say, I'll tell you what your last five Sarek crowns, uh, send a, a buckle and an occlusal screenshot, and then let's talk that over. And so basically I'm putting the onus on them to kind of spoon feed me <laughs> the, the, the mentoring, but y- yeah, but see yeah. like, you know, then it's getting done. I'm being intentional about it, but I'm not having to necessarily hunt for it myself. I'm saying, why don't you send me the screenshots, just like you said, you know, if you sent me a picture of your uh, periapical, I'm like, yeah, you know, I kind of do that, but uh, I can't do it during the day is like, well, let me look in the mouth. And I also don't like sitting down with the patient and actually, you know, acting like I'm checking on that uh, associate. So I like, you know, just them just sending a screenshot and then talking about, okay, see that little distal lingual spot, you know, so how, man, that's always been a pain in the butt to smooth until I figured out if I used my left hand to help kind of go around that distal lingual corner. Do you see how I do that right here and stuff like that, you know, that they wouldn't otherwise have known. And it would be awkward to talk about in front of a patient is being discreet about that and talking about it at a later time. I love it. Well, Chad, do you want to wrap us up for this one? Kelly, I already know your answer. And the, you know, I was driving up through your area in Michigan, going to Torch Lake. I think I told you that. And yeah. I had no idea that your area has so many cherry farms. That's amazing. Yeah. It's spectacular. So your a- answer cannot be cherries. Here's the question. All right. Bacon or eggs? Oh, clearly eggs. No Wait. kidding? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I yeah. thought you were going to be a bacon person. No. I was way off. Eggs. I'm a eggs person. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. And to our audience, thanks for listening in today to Kelly Bellinger from Productive Dennis Academy Coaching. And uh, every, everyone, thanks for joining us for Everyday Practices. Bring your lunch or take us to the gym again next week to improve your everyday practices. Also, subscribe on iTunes, follow us on social media, and sign up for our email list. Now get out there and win with Everyday Practices.